Honorable Irene Mayaka, nominated MP. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. And uh, Honorable Speaker, before I give my remarks in support of this particular report, I'd just like to take a minute to, on behalf of the people of Nyamira, because yesterday was a dark day in our, in our county. We did lose the leader of majority in Nyamira County Assembly, mm -hmm. the Honorable Elijah Osiemo, to a road accident. And I'd like to express my sincere condolences because the Honorable Elijah not only comes from Nyamira, but he also comes from my home constituency of West Mogirango. And also to express and ask Kenyans to join us to pray for the Honorable Duke Masira and the Honorable Priscilla, who are both hospitalized at the Aga Khan Hospital in Nairobi, and we wish them quick recovery. Honorable Speaker, um, having said that, I'll... Uh, proceed on to support this particular report. And Honorable Speaker, a lot has been said about the chair of the committee that he is a first-timer who has proved that he is very competent. But I also just want to tell this committee that I have known Honorable Jack for over 20 years, and both of us have been under the tutelage of a very competent politician in this country, the Right Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga. So it is no surprise that he's as competent as he is. It's because he comes from a very good school of political knowledge and also a school that tells you that you must always be accountable to your people. Honorable Speaker, um, some of the recommendations that the committee has made, and for me, my particular concern, in this country, we have a body that oversees lawyers, the LSK body. We have a body that oversees doctors. And us who are accountants and certified public secretaries, we also have the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Kenya and the Institute of P Certified Public Secretaries of Kenya, who are the bodies that ideally are meant to oversee and ensure that these accountants that are in place are actually doing their work. Honorable Speaker, it worries me because number one thing that I would wish to know is the people who are accountants, the fact that they're not doing their job well are they registered members of ISPAC? Number two, are they going for continuous training with these bodies? And one of the recommendations says that the government should capacity build these people. But I know that the, the government does not have the capability of training and retraining lawyer, uh, uh, accountants. This should be done by the bodies that oversee them. And therefore, I just want to encourage the committee that even as you give a recommendation that they need to go for continuous training, please also ensure that they are guided and that they are registered as members of the bodies that oversee accountants in this country. Secondly, Honorable Speaker, accounting is a very sensitive issue. This is the person who oversees and checks if there are any spillovers, any embezzlement that are being done in these institutions. And the institutions that the committee lists are very serious committees. These are the committees that oversee education and especially higher education in our country. How do we know that we are not having embezzlement of funds, that we are not having gaps in terms of institutional management, when we already have people who it is claimed that they are not even competent in what they do. Honorable Speaker, we have been told by, by, the, by the committee that Section 68 of the PFM Act is not being followed. This is an extremely serious offense, Honorable Speaker. It's like saying that... Um, a lawyer who comes, uh, an advocate who comes to, uh, to testify and to uh, support their matter in court are not following specific regulations in the law. And therefore, they should actually be disbarred when they don't do that. That's a very serious offense. And I, and, I, and I do hope that the punitive measures that the committee is actually proposing are in a, such a manner that it teaches a lesson and it passes a very strong message to anyone who tries to, uh, to go against it. Honorable Speaker, I also like the fact that they're recommending that only projects that have guaranteed funding should ideally be funded. Because we don't have to have a, play, a situation where we are having so many projects that have been started, so many projects that have been stalled, and there's no funding. Or, in other situations, funding has actually been provided, but because it has not been accounted for properly, we don't know where the money has gone. Honorable Speaker, right now we are having situations where you find even in county governments that there are so many pending bills in place for even roads, but those roads are not even there. So people are claiming money for things that they've not done. So I just want the committee to go further 
and actually check and see which projects are these that have stalled and were they even allocated money. Honorable Speaker, and finally on the issue of gender, ethnicity, and regional balance, and the Honorable David Boni, uh, uh, my senior, uh, alluded to this. Honorable Speaker, you know, it's very sad that in this country, we have a whole sector, the energy sector, that can actually conduct its board meetings in one language. Because we have every person that leads that particular sector coming from one community in this country. Honorable Speaker, as we talk right now, we've had situations in the last nine months, and I want to be very frank about this, where we are having employment opportunities, including as personal sec permanent secretaries in this country, but majority of those people are coming from one community. Honorable Speaker, this is an issue that we have to speak what about. What is out of order? Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, as I would respect my counterpart, he's a CPA like me, and of course he understands matters to do with evidence in every statement we make. As per the standing order, I would wish that the Honorable Member substantiates the statement she has made that the energy sector is run by one community that they can prosecute matters on, in their vernacular language. That is very, uh, statement is very... You, you've uh, asked for substantiation, yes, Honorable Mayaka, very, substantiate. Yes, because the, the energy sector has got several sagas in it. No, no, no don't respond. You, 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 you don't. Honorable Mayaka, substantiate Honorable or withdraw. Honorable Speaker, I, I, you know, some of, this, some of these issues are just a Google away. For example, Kenya Power, the CEO comes from one community. Geothermal, the CEO comes from one community. Energy regulation, the CEO comes from one community. We, we the Kalenjin community. community. But it's true. Google. It's a Google away, Honorable Speaker. Why are we denying these matters? Kenya Pipeline, the CEO comes from one community. That is why I'm saying all these people, when they're having a meeting on matters energy, they can actually conduct their proceedings in one on, language. Honorable and by the what is out of order. That same community. Uh, honorable Speaker, you know, it's very unfortunate that uh, just because someone bears a name that resembles another uh, person, that is, is that, how do you know that person is from that ethnic community? You know, Honorable Speaker, we should not use names as a basis to say, Kaluma, even in my community, there is a person called Kaluma. It doesn't mean that Kaluma is Luo. It, it doesn't mean so in that substantiation i think the best thing Honorable is for Rene, is to, what, to withdraw what substantiation he has not requires used. of you order yeah. order honorable Owen, is to give us the names of the members of the community you are talking about and confirmation of the community they belong to honorable speaker absent I that i'll require you to withdraw that part honorable of your statement. speaker i will bring you the specific names tomorrow and will allow me to table them in this parliament yes. Would, would, would that uh, suffice? Yes. Oh, and lineage to yes, show, yes. you know. It's okay. <laughs> their, details, to show. Their, details are, their details are on public knowledge, including the village. I will bring the information here tomorrow. I know the standing orders allow for presentation of such information. Is it uh, to the next date? But on the uh, Mayaka, is this something that should actually take our time, substantive time tomorrow? Yes, yes it is. It is a serious matter, Honorable Speaker, because it is a substantive matter in this particular report on gender and ethnicity and regional balance in this country. And Honorable Speaker, Honorable I, I, Speaker... I thought we were debating the report. The, and the this report is, this concerns is a point the education the sector, not the energy sector. It is part of the report. Honorable uh, Irene Mayaka, you'll be you'll be substantiating in line with our standing orders the statement that um, critical leaders in the energy ministry or energy sectors uh, come from one community. Much obliged, Honorable Speaker. Uh, tomorrow. Uh, yes, Honorable oh. Speaker. Honorable Speaker, these at, people have stolen at, my time. At, at, when Parliament sits, Much when obliged. Parliament sits tomorrow afternoon, when the, uh, the, the Speaker who will be presiding will grant 
necessary leave that you do so. Much obliged, Honorable Speaker. Uh, yeah, you may proceed to conclude. I kindly request that that clock be returned back to Amber because my time has been stolen by very many people. W wind up. W wind up. We, we are running out of time. Honorable Speaker, I just want, because that was my very last point, I'd just like to reference it back to point number 25 from the committee that speaks to failure to adhere to gender, ethnicity, regional balance, and other considerations in staffing. That is where I was um, uh, referencing my point to. And Honorable Speaker, you know very well that I'm a very sharp girl. I don't just say things that I don't know about. I thank you. Honorable Fatuma uh, Mohamed, the MP for Migori County, <laughs> followed by Honorable uh, Beatrice Adagala in that order. <laughs> My time is